Good morning, Trinity. Hi, how are you today? Um, Chapel is in a very different setting today, but we praise the Lord because in all things we're able to express our love and worship for God. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you for coming out today. I think we have some uh, guests here today. Welcome to Trinity. Welcome to the hour when we come together as a community uh, to worship, to reflect, to edify one another in uh, the love of Christ. Today's chapel is a um, student-led chapel. We want to thank the Gospel Choir. Give me, join me in uh, giving the Gospel Choir a great chance of leading us today. Thank you so much, Gospel Choir. And uh, along with Gospel Choir, we have the Missions Cabinet here today to tell us about their experiences along with other students going out to different parts of the world. Um, thank Trinity. I, I mean, just welcome uh, Missions Cabinet today. Um, we would like to share what our experience and the global partnerships have been this year. That's what we're here uh, to tell you today, to tell you that um, there are great things happening around the world that Trinity is doing, and we want you to know about these opportunities, uh, to hear our stories, to hear our experiences, and to invite you to consider to be part of what God is doing around the world. With the global partnerships, we basically seek to experience an integration of our faith and our learning in a cross-cultural context. And you get to do this over the spring break, the winter break, um, or the summer break. So today you will hear testimonies from our students and uh, an invitation for you to join. Um, welcome Richard. Richard Groman will be the first person to tell us about uh, his experience. Can you all see that? Okay, well, I'll tell you what it says. It says helpless. Um, so I was asked to share a couple of my experiences <clears throat> on this trip. And uh, well, before I introduce myself, um, I'd just like to say I am Richard. Um, I am an elementary education major, currently in my junior block. So it's kind of hectic, the, hectic this time of year, but getting through it. Um, so I had the opportunity to go to Costa Rica. As you can see, I have the jersey on. Um, but I put helpless. I put helpless um, because there had been a lot of things going on before. And it's a little emotional, so forgive me if I start tearing up because it moves me a lot. Um, so... I, I'm going to go actually back to last year in 2015. Um, I had a strong urge to go on a missions trip, and uh, I was praying about it, asking God if he could give me a uh, chance to do that, and lo and behold, Trinity offers tremendous mission trips. I suggest you all look into it, um, and right when I prayed about it, um, Costa Rica popped up, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go. So this was in 2015, and I went... And I can tell you right now that it impacted my life so much. I, um, I, let's just say I felt I wanted to do missions in Central America after that. Um, and God really opened my eyes to some of the things I hadn't really seen before. Um, some of the unfortunate things of this world, um, spiritual warfare, everything like that. Um, and I, I came out of that trip feeling as though I had a purpose. God finally like, told me what I was going to do, and it was going to be great. Um, and so I went into the summer, and, um, and I, 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 was just, I was just so so on fire, I guess you could say. Um, but that's when God told me, or taught me, I guess you could say, some of the things that I needed to be working on, um, and I learned a lot of things. Um, and this is when life really got raw for me. So, in the beginning of the summer, I, I built fences in the summer, um, and I remember a particular day I was working outside, and my boss came up to me, and he told me that um, my yeah um, my brother's best friend died. And that was difficult. And then, uh, you know, it, 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 didn't get, it didn't get better. Um, we were mourning the loss, our whole family. 
the whole community. Um, and fast forward to the end of the summer when we were kind of getting over it, but it was still, it was still difficult. My, uh, my dad had a heart attack. Um, and, you know, it was the first time you're like, man, my dad could be gone. Um, but he isn't. In fact, he's doing very well. But it really, it really sent my family into a, um, a whole different route. Um, my dad, he quit his job. Currently, um, my family has no income. So money is tight. Um, yeah. And um, I came into the semester, fall semester, thinking that it couldn't get any worse. Um, and I was wrong. I came in, and about a month in, I get a call from my dad saying that uh, um, another boy died, um, very close to me. He's nine years old. He died in a four-wheel accident. Um, and uh, at that point, I was really questioning God in a lot of ways. Never my salvation, but that's how, that's how it went. Um, I was angry. I didn't understand why he would take away children, because we had experienced that too many times. Um, so I was already committed to going to Costa Rica pretty early on because I was like, I'm going to go back and it's going to be great. But then I brought all these experiences with me. And um, so I, I came to Costa Rica just wanting to develop my relationship with, with God. And um, yeah, there I learned a lot. And so it went for, I went from hopeless, or helpless to hopeful. Um, um, yeah, so I realize that my hope is found in Christ. Um, you know, I had a lot of questions. I wanted God to answer my prayers. I was praying a lot. I was like, God, take my family out of this. Take the pain away. Um, and you know what? My family is still without, without money, um, and the pain is still there, but God is always there. Amen? Um, yeah, and so that, that just impacted me tremendously. I realized, you know, you go on these trips, it changes your perspective. It changes the way you think. You, you see... You see these kids, we worked with children, um, and they come from terrible backgrounds. And you just realize how much you have here. Um, and that's one reason why you should go. Another reason why you should go um, is that, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll be revealed things. Um, real, God will reveal things to you at that given moment. Um, if you are seeking God, especially when you're out serving others, um, you're going you're gonna to hear answers, and you're going to hear the Lord speak to you in mighty ways. Like here, you can hear him speak, but when you're just there and you're not, you're focused on the Lord and serving others, like it's just, it's just a great feeling. I suggest you all do it. Um, now, some of you might say, well, I can't, I can't do this. I don't have the money, the finances. And I can tell you right now, I don't have the finances um, I raised money, and the money didn't come in until like a week before the trip. I'm talking like half of the money for both trips, 2015 and 2016. So finances, um, don't let that stop you because, frankly, that's like nonsense. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then also some of you might be saying, well, school. School is, is too much for me. Um, I just have so much going on. Guys, I'm in junior block. If any of you know what junior block is, I can tell you right now, it's one of the worst semesters at Trinity. Although, I will say, elementary education majors, if you guys want to do it, go for it, because it's great. Um, but I can tell you right now that you can still go on a trip 
during the semester and get through. I'm getting through. I, we only have a few more weeks, right? Um, yeah. And then lastly, I put this in my notes because I think this needs to be said. Guys, you guys need to go because of Costa Rica and India, I don't know the other ones, but in Costa Rica and India, there was only two guys. I was the one in Costa Rica and Jesse was the one in India. And I can tell you that we need you. <laughs> like, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. But I'm just saying that, um, you know, we need that balance, you know? And, uh, yeah, so I suggest the guys to come. And I'm calling you all out, everybody, everyone. Um, and, yeah, so uh, just a verse that I'd like to share with you all that I think um, really impacted me, and especially it should just be like your motto when you're on a short-term mission trip especially, is this, Jeremiah 29, 13, which says, you will seek me and find me, and when you seek me with, or sorry, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So, yes, that is my story. Hey guys. Um, so if you don't know, I'm Ann Renner. Um, I'm a junior here at Trinity, and my major is exercise science, and I'm minoring in Christian ministries. And I had the wonderful opportunity of going to Los Angeles through MCAB. Yes. <laughs> um, so originally, I was actually planning to go to Uganda, but I just felt that personally I could learn more by going to Los Angeles because I had already been on quite a few missions trips outside the country. Um, so I decided to switch and I went to LA. And the trip is primarily focused on exposing students to the challenges, opportunities, and rewards of urban ministry through coordinating with ministry teams in Los Angeles. Um, so you're really able to just focus on cross-cultural ministry and put what you learn here into practice and also experience what urban ministry is beside pre-existing ministries. Um, so I actually hope to move into an urban context when I graduate, so it was literally a perfect fit. Um, but something I really struggled with going into it was the feeling that I wasn't really doing ministry because it was an educational missions trip. Um, and I'd always thought of ministry as like this totally selfless act where you go in and you serve and you like cause this radical change in someone else's life. Um, and if it changes you, great, which it always does. Um, but that's not our focus because, well, we're serving others and it's not anything to do with who we are. Um, and after going to LA and just doing my best to learn and be educated by the people there, I can really say it is a true ministry. Um, because oftentimes we struggle with this savior complex when we go on missions trips. Um, and it's us going into someone else's broken life and we're causing this change and we're causing this new lifestyle. Um, and we forget that they're actually people. They're not objects to be fixed. Um, they have their own experiences. They have their own wisdom, their own knowledge that can be shared. And oftentimes we just go in and we're gonna fix you when we're also in need of being fixed and we can't fix them and they can't fix us. It's God doing the fixing. Um, so, um, educational ministry really allows us to partner with ministries and learn from them and attribute dignity to the people we're going to. Um, we're given the opportunity to put that savior complex to the side and really go as people to people for Christ. Um, and here at Trinity, we have amazing opportunities to learn from awesome professors and these people who are really, really influential in the church, but our learning is still affected by our context. We're in a wealthy suburban context and that's gonna affect the way we learn. So by going to these different places in the country and all around the world, we're able to learn from other people things that we could never learn here, no matter how much we study. Um, and when you invest in educational short-term missions, you're really investing in your lifelong ministry. You're able to like, work beside other ministries and serve others while also gaining valuable insights and lessons. And you can incorporate what you learned into your life when you get back. Um, and you can then use that to affect hundreds, if not thousands of people throughout the rest of your life. So you're not only going to be able to serve in the moment on that trip, 
but you're also going to be able to serve so much better when you get back. And I'm not saying that if you don't go on an educational missions trip, you're not going to learn anything and it's not going to affect you when you get back. I'm just saying that when we go with the intention to learn, you're going to gain a lot more than if you already think you know everything. Um, and in LA, I learned about my passions and what I want to do after I graduate. I realized I'm really passionate about serving broken families and connecting with people who are disadvantaged. And I also learned that LA really suited me. Um, and I would actually like to move there when I graduate. And before that wasn't even on my radar. I was looking at Chicago and Pittsburgh, um, San Francisco, and a little bit south of San Diego. But when I got to LA, I was like, wow, this, I think this is where God has me to go. Um, but most importantly, I learned how to contextualize the gospel in different cultures. Um, LA is so diverse. You can go like five miles down the street and be in a completely different area with a completely different lifestyle. So each day on the trip, we got to go into different areas and see how the gospel was contextualized there and just really learn how to put the gospel in someone else's porch. It's not in yours, you put it in theirs. Um, and so it's just, it's wonderful because when I graduate, I'm not gonna be flying into ministry like blinded. I actually know what to do and where I'm going, which is beautiful. And something I wanna emphasize is that you don't have to be pursuing an MDiv or any type of ministry to do ministry. You can be a counseling major, you can be history, you can be athletic training, and you can still use your life as your ministry. Um, I'm going into a secular career field. I wanna be a personal trainer. Even though I'm minor, minoring in ministry, I don't wanna do it vocationally. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't use your life as your ministry and not just your job. Um, we're all called to be the light of the world. You're not called to be the light if you're a pastor or a small group leader. You're called to be the light, period. It doesn't matter who you are or what you're doing, you're called to be the light. Um, so I just wanna encourage all of you, if you're pursuing vocational ministry, great, these trips are for you. And if you're not, awesome, they're still for you. Um, so it's just, there's so many invaluable lessons you can learn on this. If I told you everything I learned, I would be up here for the rest of the day, and nobody wants that. Um, so I would just like to encourage you to consider being part of this. Um, and I'd also like you to be able to hear from the rest of my team and not just me. So we're gonna play a short film of just what everyone on the team learned while we were there. Thank you. Um, so I'm sure you guys all saw the cards on your seat. Um, and I would just like to give you a few minutes to just reflect on everything that you've heard about the trips and people's testimonies and give you an opportunity to maybe sign those. Um, you're not signing up for a trip. If you fill it out, we'll probably just send you some information, um, see who's interested. Um, but again, I just really encourage you guys to check these trips out because I was really skeptical of going. I was like, I don't know if educational stuff is for me. Like, I thought this was service, but you're still serving and learning, and then you're able to incorporate that so much more into when you come back. And we're here to learn. This is what God's called us to right now. So I just encourage you to take advantage of that. So, thank you. Okay, as you leave, you can put uh, your slips if you fold them out. We have baskets kind of going out that way. So please remain seated to receive this charge and benediction. As children of God, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.